everyone, and thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, my, as the introduction, my name is Ash Solomon. I help customers really in, to innovate a uh, big organization uh, in healthcare and banks and, and utility, uh, help them to innovate and be able to um, use the cloud and AI and, and IoT uh, to bring a new line of revenue um, for them and, and create an innovation solutions. Um, in this presentation, I will walk you through a real case scenario, working with a customer, how we helped them to create their own uh, IoT solution, and it was around smart home solution. And I'm gonna start from the beginning, so you guys understand why would a utility company would like to embrace an IoT or cloud or AI, and how they can use that uh, for innovation and bringing a new kind of line of revenue or even using the data that's coming from the innovation. But before we start, I'm gonna start really from the beginning. What is an IoT, right? We hear these terms, an internet of things, right? But what, what's an, an internet of things? Um, basically, anything that can uh, connect to a network and can have a connection to a network, it becomes a thing, right? And since it connects to a network, that becomes an internet of things. We can make a network of all of these things. Right? So the thing can be anything. Can be your car, can be your coffee machine, can you be your fridge, can you can be your pulp, right? Can be your thermostat, can be your smart plug, which can be connected to anywhere in your home. And since there is a protocol for this device to communicate to the network, right, and be able to receive commands and con and be able to control it from outside and also be able to push data back and send data back, right? As what is the usage of my fridge that is I'm connected to, right? So that's all of this small devices and can be any device that is able to connect, able to receive a command and send the data. It becomes a thing. And then based on all of these things, we can connect and make a network of things. And then we need to be able to get the data and send the commands. We came to the term was like, okay, if I have a billion thing connected to me, I need to connect to, to, to collect a billion data points from each thing, right? So we needed to gather and control all of this data. So we, the, we, we, from an architecture perspective, if you do it for a single device, it becomes very hard, right? So let's just think about your home, and it has a 60 devices connected. What if I have a, a small device it becomes my gateway to all the devices in my home, right? And which is why usually in the IoT terms, we call it an IoT gateway. So I will collect different devices and pass them through a gateway, and that becomes my IoT gateway. What's the usage of that? The IoT gateway in this case plays the role of getting all of the data, filter it before sending it to your cloud where you can store it, or to, or to control multiple devices it becomes your focal point. It becomes one point of connection. And that would reduce a lot of storage for you in the cloud because the gateway becomes your processing power at every home. And that's why we call it a compute at the edge because we're doing it at every home. And it becomes also, if we have multiple sensors in your car, we can have a small device connected to your car it becomes the IoT gateway into your car that controls multiple things within the same area. So now we have multiple gateways that is connected to multiple devices. How can we connect them to one infrastructure or one network, be able to control them and collect the data from them, right? So now we need to have an, a communication uh, protocol and also a communication network and be able to connect all of those devices uh, to the internet and usually to the cloud because where we can find the storage to be able to collect all of this data except in the cloud. We need to expand on the storage, so we need to have something where we'll be able to expand based on the load, right? And the cloud gives us this elasticity, right? It gives us, we can grow as much as we can without, without being worried about a physical storage, right? So, so now we're talking about, okay, we collected all of the devices. Now we have a core features that after we collect the data and be able to, com to control the devices, how are we managing the identity of each device? How are we connecting this device and be sure not, not, this device, we know this device, we know the ID of the device, and be sure it's a secure to receive data and send commands to this device. 
So that's a feature we need to have, like an identity and management. Second one, how I'm, I'm managing all of these devices. I talked about millions and billions of devices. When I'm gonna update the devices, how I'm gonna send one update that goes into all the devices from home? I'm not gonna ask billion uh, user or billion consumer or million consumer to come and bring me a device, right? They have to be over air, have to be sent from a centralized, centralized place and be able to update all of them. How also we are doing, if any update on the software we developed for this device, how are we gonna push this uh, software update to the device itself? How are we collecting all of the data and making sense of the data and making kind of uh, putting the data in the right target at the end? So that becomes mainly a core functionality of your IoT platform, right? And that's what we call it the IoT platform. I need to have a core functionality of my IoT platform to manage the identity and device management and collect the data from all of those devices. In the past, for any organization to build this in-house, it becomes very expensive, right? In the cloud, we have all of these capabilities, part of Amazon or AWS kind of core, IoT core, offering, right, or platform, right? So it becomes much easier for any organization to use the cloud as their IoT platform and be able to have an IoT solution based on a, a part of their solutions, right, using the cloud. It makes it much easier for them not to worry about the infrastructure, not to worry about all of this device management and identity management and all of this stuff, and use a cloud provider like Amazon AWS for doing that. Right? But so, that's good. I mean, this is great. We have now a million connected device, right? We estimated uh, for one of the utility companies they would have a six million connected sensors between smart plug and thermostat and pulp for, for their consumers. So what are we gonna do after that? It was like, perfect, we connected all of them, right? The most important part of connected devices and internet of things is the data. The data is the king. And that's the future will be, right? So collecting all of this data and making sense of this data can drive a new line of business for any business or any company, right? Take an example. For the utility company, once we connect all the data, we can train AI models to understand when is the fridge is behaving normally or abnormally, right? So. I can notify you as a consumer, by the way, your fridge is behaving abnormally. Maybe you need someone to check your fridge. Here is a phone number for a trusted uh, partner or workshop that can help you to fix your fridge. That's a new line of business. Utility company wasn't there before. Same thing for your AC, same thing for your heater, right? An insurance company we're working with them right now is to, to put sensors around your, uh, the water uh, boiler, right? Because this is the one causing millions of damages and claims. Once it breaks, you have the water on the floor, it damaged the entire first level or first floor, right? Now I have a claim for thousands of dollars, not to fix, to fix the boiler, but to fix the infrastructure that's been damaged by the boiler and the water. What if we have an IoT device that's connected or sensor to sense if there is a water to shut off the valve and be able to send a notification immediately so you take an action quickly. That's the data. That's what you want from an IoT platform. And that's why a lot of organizations looking to build an IoT platform and to have an IoT platform. All of this data and building applications and building solutions on top of the IoT platform, we call them the added on services. Right? So now me as an organization, once I build a platform, I can add on services, I can add on applications on top of the IoT platform that will drive for me a new line of business. If not, it will drive for me a better customer experience. Right? A utility company, any one of us to check their bill, they go only once a month to their utility app, if you have the app in your phone. But now if I provide you a smart home solution where you can control your thermostat, you can control your plug, you can control your uh, pulp, right? How many times are you gonna use their app? A day? 100 times? That's a consumer behavior. 
So now I know more about you as a utility company than what I used to know before. Right, so are we good now? I think we know what we're talking about as an internet of things. We know what about what's an IoT gateway, right? We know what is the added on service we can build and why we need an IoT platform, the data. The AI models where we can build later on based on this data. And just one last statement about that. In the future, companies will measure their assets based on how many AI models they own, how many AI models they trained, right? And how can they use these AI models to drive new business and new business revenue? That's the language the new CFO will start talking about, or will start using it, right? When they start evaluating companies in the future, will be, tell me how many, you, how many AI models do you have? What they can do, what they could determine. Not how many planet, power planets, not how many sites do you have, not how many buildings do you own, right? That's the, that's the data and AI era we are entering, right? So why we're doing a smart home solution for utility companies, right? There is, I can go and buy a Philips pulp and it comes with the app and the Alexa skill already connected, right? I can buy a smart plug it's already connected with Alexa and enabled with Alexa. Why should do that, right? We found out, yes, you can do that, but when you go to Honeywell and buy a thermostat, that's an app, that's an Alexa skill. So one and one, okay. When I buy a smart plug, that's one and one. So now I have 10 apps on my phone to control 10 devices in my home. You can't do that, it's very hard, and they don't work together, right? So creating one app, to be able to control all the smart devices in your home, having one Alexa skill to control all of the smart devices in your home, for a customer, that's absolutely required. So from a customer, we deliver a better customer experience. So absolutely the customer will come and say, I need your smart home solution. That's one. So from a utility company, still, why do you want to do it? So it's a, for sure, okay, it's a new business, it's a new line of revenue, but what else? The data, as we mentioned. Think about it, if I know that there is a demand coming to my grid, power grid, right? And the demand is expanding, I have to build another power plant, right? It costs a lot of millions. But imagine if I can know that, let's say in Arizona, I know that there is more power coming, I know there is more consumption on my power, and be able to have a contract and subscription with my consumers and tell them, you know what? Whenever there is a power demand, I'm gonna reduce your usage by maybe adjusting your thermostat by two degrees for 15 minutes only, just to reduce the demand at the peak. If I could do that without building a new power planet, I saved millions of dollars, right? For a company, just using the IoT platform they built. That's what they did, right? Using the data. Take another example. And by the way, this one, it's very known pattern in power and, and utility right now. It's called demand and response. I'm responding to the demand in a creative way, not to build another power plant. Another one, we call it a price arbitrage. If I know your consumer, if, you, if I know you as a consumer, you're using your dishwasher or your laundry uh, uh, or dryer over the night, during the day, the electricity is so expensive. So if I can advise you, why you don't program your dryer or your washing machine uh, to be running from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. because that's gonna save you this $20, let's say. Wouldn't you like that? I'm sure you would like that. You would consider it as a better service from my utility company. And if there's two providers of a utility, I would pick the one who cares about saving money for me than the one who doesn't save money for me, right? It becomes now a, a competition and a kind of an, an, an advantage for you as a utility company. So that's the problem. Right now, the challenge is if I wanna do a smart home solution, I have to buy multiple devices from multiple vendors, I have to have multiple apps, multiple um, Alexa skills to control multiple devices. And from, an, from the organization perspective, right now they don't have data from a utility company, they don't have data, they would like to have the data to drive more business, 
their side and deliver better customer experience. So that's the main challenge we're trying to address for building a smart, a smart home solution for a utility company. All right, so how did we address that? The first slide we did, right? We, we, what, what, when we presented an IoT platform, that's what we did. We built for them an IoT platform, but it became an easy to use an IoT platform from Amazon AWS, where we have all the services that is available for controlling the device, sending or sub, uh, propagating the, uh, software updates to the device from one place, and be able to secure the communication between the device and the IoT platform, right? So we configured the IoT platform or the IoT core services on, on AWS. We developed a mobile app. We developed an Alexa app. And we used a gateway uh, coming from Intel. We call it the IoT 8 Intel gateway to be able to control multiple devices at the same time at home. And then we certified some devices. This bulb works with our gateway. Um, this plug works with our gateway and this thermostat works with our gateway. So this is how we build the whole smart home solution. And later we're gonna show you a full demo of how it's working, right? Uh, but now we have the, the IoT platform, we have the devices, we have the smart home solution. The technician from the utility company will be able to come to your home and install it for you. That's another challenge we have in any IoT solution. How can we make the, any IoT solution that we provide, right, a consumer base? A normal consumer can use it, right? The setup and the installation becomes a challenge. But if I have a technician in a utility company where they are everywhere because they come and fix your power, right, they can come and install it for you. That becomes more appealing for you as a consumer to use the IoT solution, the smart home solution they provide, right? So we build a full kind of supply chain model, if you will, from starting from how the devices would work, how we will onboard them, how the technician will go, how and then install it, and then how it works and we collect the data. Importantly, we build a dashboard for the utility companies to be able to use the data to respond to the demand at the beginning, but also to give more data and more kind of offers to the customer for selling them extra services, as well as provide a price arbitrage kind of data for them to reduce their power. Now with this solution, the user or the consumer is able even to understand how is his bedroom cost, utility cost, right? And even he can set up threshold where if it goes beyond this, let me know there's something wrong, right? Now I can even determine basically how each room in my, bu in my, in my building or my, my house is behaving from a power perspective. And maybe there is something wrong with the power itself, right? So I can go and fix it, okay? So that's from a kind of a consumer uh, perspective as well. Okay, so Many organizations, they would have the idea, like how this utility company started, the CIO said, oh, I'm gonna build an IoT solution, I wanna build a smart home solution, right? But he, he don't know from where to start, right? It is very important to do a design thinking workshop. We get everyone in the room and try to think about who are you delivering this solution to? A consumer, what is the consumer what is the kind of the persona of your consumers? What do you feel? What do you like? What makes them disappointed? What makes them happy? You understand your consumer first before you start building the solution for your consumers. And then we start, after understanding what's the problem, who's the, what's the persona, we start coming up with a minimal viable product definition. What is a definition of a minimal viable product that we can release it to the consumer and be able to get a feedback from them if that's gonna work for them or would not work for them, right? For them. Imagine that you build a solution for six, eight months or a year, and then you, uh, you kind of launch it in the marketplace, and then the feedback you get is like, nope, no one is using it. What's hap what happened for the one year of work? It's gone, 
But with a minimal viable product, I can get a feedback much quicker. I can know if my product will succeed or will not succeed. Or maybe a little adjustment in my product will make it much better. Before it's investing and spending more, more time and more money before launching the product. So we do that a lot with the customer. They're looking for an innovative idea and innovative solution. That they are delivering a product for the first time, like a utility company in this case. So we came up with a minimal viable product for them first. And we implemented for them. And we did a pilot for uh, first 20 employee and friends for the utility company, get the feedback, go back, enhance based on the feedback, and launch the new one. The new one expanded to 100, and then you go beyond, beyond, beyond. In IoT solution, it is very important to do a pilot. Why? Because you have devices connected, installation. It's not a normal IT project where you have a software you just install and you go, right? This is very important to know it's easy to install or not. How can you update and all of this stuff. So Pilot gives you all of this information once you do on a pilot. And we definitely used all of the uh, services that can be provided from AWS for the IoT platform, right? So it might not be clear here, but I'm gonna go through them. So from a client side, from a consumer side, we give them the IoT gateway, which is basically, think about it as, as a normal kind of laptop, but in a smaller version. So the box is like that, that size. You can hold it in one hand. But it has the power as your laptop. It doesn't have the power to connect to a screen, because you don't need a screen to keyboard, you don't need a keyboard. You need it as a processing unit, pretty much. We installed a software on top of that, we'll be able to understand all the devices protocol. There is two common protocols right now for IoT to communicate with most of the devices. One is called Z-Wave, the other one is called Zigbee, right? If you didn't hear about them, don't worry about them. But it's just a matter of protocol. Be able to control or communicate to a smart pulp or a thermostat, they usually understand one of the two, okay? We use an open source tool, it's called OpenHAP, to install it on this device so they can communicate through Zigbee and Z-Wave to all of the devices. And then, we just needed a small code or an application to run on the gateway. So when we send a command to the gateway to say turn off this light on the living room, it would understand where is the light and will turn it off and on. Okay, perfect. Now we have the solution from a consumer side, from the home side. The same gateway will be able to send a, a, tons, a tons amount of data for us right now. It knows when is the living room is on and off, right? Smart plug, what is the usage of the fridge? Or, or even the AC. All of that we can collect now and we can get into the cloud, right? In this case, of the Amazon AWS cloud. At the same time, we give the, the consumer a mobile app to be able to control the devices and Alexa scale. Again, one Alexa scale, one mobile app to control the whole devices. So now, we created, since we have a connection to all of the devices, we created scene. The scene is basically, am I away? Am I awake? Right? Or I'm just maybe in a study mode or reading mode. And what happened is it controls all of your devices to match the scene that you're looking for. I'm away, it shuts off everything. I'm awake, turns off everything. Using one device for one app, you wouldn't be able to do that. It will require a lot of orchestration to do that. On the cloud side, now we have IoT Core, which is a service on AWS, will help you to create a connection, secure connection with your device, right? Manage the security, manage the license, and be able also to communicate in a way, it's one way between you and the device. Why this is important? Your gateway should not be accessible from the internet. Because if it's accessible from the internet, you might be hacked. So the only way we can stop accessing the internet, the gateway from the internet, is to have one-way communication. The gateway can establish the connection, but you cannot establish the connection to the gateway. The gateway can send the data, or receive the data through the same connection, but you cannot send the data or control the IoT gateway. IoT Core will help you to do that, right? Again, if you didn't have the cloud, if you didn't have the AWS IoT Core 
service, you have, to, you have to build something similar. It would cost you, again, a fortune from an organization perspective to do something similar. Now we have the connection. I can manage right now the software updates using something called AWS Greengrass. It helps you to create a kind of bi-directional updates to your software running onto the device itself, right, the gateway, right? You write the code, you push a new version, it will go and update it. I don't need you to come to my office to update your code, I do it over the internet. And then we got the data. That's the most important part. Now we can run analytics, we'll build a dashboard on AWS for the utility companies to be able to use this data, take an action, and be able to drive better business value to their customers. One core service also is the device management. Is the device connected? Do we need to uh, be able to disable it, enable it? The consumer is not anymore working with us or is not part of the uh, client, so we need to disconnect it. How can we do that? All of this device management functionality also is built in in something like AWS uh, core services for IoT. On top of that, now we have the data. We can feed a response and demand module to determine if we need to reduce the cost or reduce the power usage on multiple devices or not. We can also uh, feed this to uh, a price arbitrage module to drive back a lower cost for the users, telling them use your dryer, use your washing machine over the night, or maybe 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., right? It drives all of this kind of cost optimization uh, for your usage of the, uh, of the power. So that's it. That's a whole full IoT core platform that you build for uh, a utility company. The value is the data. You can use all of this to drive a more kind of uh, value to your customer using your data. When we met the CIO of the organization and we were showing him the demo and he said, two weeks ago, my fridge broke. Right? I wish I have something to tell me that my fridge is going to, broke, to, to be broken. If something can tell me that, that's so valuable, that's very valuable to me and more to my consumers. So, okay, give us a week, or maybe two weeks. So we start understanding what is the pattern when the fridge is gonna, is gonna misbehave or behaving abnormally. Basically, when your fridge starts consuming more power, because the, 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 the real kind of usage of your fridge is will stop, oops, will stop using the power when the compressor kicks off, uh, will use the power when the compressor kicks off, right? But then the power stays in a normal state until the, the compressor kicks off again. So when your fridge is using, is using more power than normal, then your fridge is behaving abnormally right now. And you can predict that. You can detect that. So if we train an AI model to understand what is the normal behavior of an average fridge, and what's the abnormal behavior of an average fridge, and now it's an AI model, not a person telling you that, it will determine if the fridge is behaving normally or abnormally, send you a notification immediately. When we showed him this, it was like, now I know this is the right solution for me. Now I know what I could do with the IoT platform. Okay, that's a real case scenario. So this is a low level kind of details how we implemented this on AWS, right? If you are very interested in knowing which, which, ser which servers will do and how to use it into AWS, uh, me and Dave will hang around, around uh, will be around uh, during the launch. We can answer any question from you. But basically, it's, you have the Alexa skill, you have an API gateway on the AWS. We're running a code uh, using a serverless platform on AWS called Lambda, and then the code is communicating through the IoT core, right, to the devices into your home. And here we have the IoT gateway that we talked about it that has all the software to control the devices at your home. All right, so let's see a demo. And before I tell you, uh, show you the demo, I want to tell you kind of a story behind the demo. When we went to the, to, the, to the technical team, they said, 
we find it very hard to explain it to the business. Every time we do a demo, we bring them a bunch of devices, put it in front of them, and we turn it on and off. But for them, it's very it's like, okay, what is that? Okay, fine, this is an IoT. What does it mean, right, for me as a business? So we decided to build a small model of a house to show them how the consumer will use it at home in a real kind of an action, right? So this is exactly what we did. Let me play the video. I can't speak. So if you can see, we have a home, small home here, right? It's a two floors. So the upper floor will have the light. And the lower floor will have a fan and will have the thermostat. And we have a mobile app, which is installed in iOS. And now we will see the Alexa also next to it. And what Josh will do right now in the video, we'll start controlling these devices. First using the mobile app, and then using the Alexa. There you go, that's the fan. I'm turning on the fan. And the fan is connected to a smart plug. So I can connect my fridge to the smart plug, I can connect anything that takes power to my smart plug. And now I'm controlling the thermostat. Again, I used one app to control all of the devices at my home. Again, I can use the same app to orchestrate a scene. And I should be able to also see my usage of electricity for each room in my home using the same app. What's important here also is when I'm buying, let's say, a, a, a standalone, let's say, a pulp, smart pulp, and I'm using their app and I'm using their uh, Alexa app or Alexa skill, they are not connected to my billing. They don't have access to my utility billing. They don't have access to my uh, utility transaction, all of this stuff. The only one who has access to this is the utility company. Integrated, all, integrating also the, the billing, the customer experience, when did you call them, what was the issue before, it gives you also one integrated solution, or one integrated app that customizes it for you based on your experience with this utility company. That's another added value to that. Perfect. And I'm sure Josh, if you could see it, it's two minutes, so Josh also used the, the, uh, the Alexa skill to control also the different devices uh, in the home. Right, so I'm done with uh, my site, my slides, but I'll, I will be around if you have any questions, around if you need to understand more on the technical side, on the business side, I'll be more than happy to uh, help you guys and answer any questions. All right, thanks, Ash. Oh, wow, that's loud. So what I want to talk about, we've talked about kind of the process on how you go about building an IoT solution, kind of what the variables you need to look at and why you want to do it. What I want to talk about and really prove out the process for you guys is customer success, right? The best way to demonstrate that this is a working model is to show that customers are having success with it. Um, so. What we like to start the conversation off with our customers is a very simple statement. If you knew the state of everything and could reason on top of this data, what problems would you be able to solve with it? So it's a profound statement, but I want to break it down to three different parts. And each of these parts I kind of want you to keep in mind as I start talking about the customer solutions that they're building, right? So the first part is if you knew the state of everything. So traditionally with IoT devices, in the past, it's been historically hard to get these connected to the internet. It's been not cost effective. It's been difficult. The infrastructure wasn't quite there. You know, not everyone had a, a Wi-Fi access point in their home or a mobile device in their pocket, right? The gateway of our lives nowadays. So unlocking the state of everything is really one of the first steps. That's getting this Internet of Things paradigm the millions and billions of devices out there connected to the cloud platform so that you can start doing the real value add, which is reasoning on top of that data, which is what Ash was talking about. This is really the king here. This is where you can get your value proposition, which ultimately leads to the third point, which is, at that point, what problems can you solve by doing this? So our customers are solving problems in all different sectors. So I'm just going to kind of highlight some of the ones um, that I know about, because we have a, a laundry list of customers up here. So up in the top left, we have customers like Vizio, who are cloud connecting their TVs and 
their sound bars. And why would you want to do something like that? Well, if it's cloud connected, you can push firmware updates down. You can do command and control. So I know at my house, I can walk into my bedroom and yell at my TV to turn on using Alexa. Um, and I can also yell at it to turn off, like Alexa, turn off my TV, um, which is great because I'm super lazy and I don't want to get out of bed. So it differentiates the product. It allows you more command and control, better granular controls, you know, pushing firmware updates down, keeping security patched and up to date. Something you wouldn't see 20 years ago on a TV, right? You buy a TV once, it's, it's going to work or it's not going to work, and you have to send it back. Now they can update it in real time, add functionality over time, and your product now evolves over time. So your TV can get more functionality in the future. So Vizio is doing that. Another company you guys would be familiar with is, is iRobot. They make our friendly vacuum cleaner robots that clean our house. So they're mapping 500 million square feet of data in, in customers' house to really build out that product. And they're leveraging IoT to do that on our AWS cloud platform. Along with other computation services, they're using the networking, the storage, the database, all the services you want to work in tandem with the IoT data ingestion. So really focusing on doing that reasoning on top of the, the IoT um, data that you get connected. Ratio is an interesting use case as well. So this is another one you, you wouldn't typically see in the past. So they do sprinkler systems, and they have a smart sprinkler system for their irrigation. So where's the value add there? Well, I, used, I come from Arizona, and it's extremely ungodly hot there, right? There's actually specific, specific times you're supposed to water your lawn. You don't do it in the middle of the day. Why? Because you literally will waste, like, spray money into oblivion because the sun will just, and the heat will just evaporate your water in the middle of the day. If you have a cloud-connected system, it can monitor the weather. It can optimize when you're doing your, your irrigation system, when you're spending your water. It saves you time, saves you money. Um, so the value add there is getting that cloud connected, which is what Ratio is doing. Um, lastly, another energy company is Enel, a um, large energy company that, similar to what Ash was presenting earlier, has built out a model that they're leveraging green grass at the edge to do energy consumption uh, data gathering and sending that to the cloud so they can analyze it and figure out, you know, how can we save our customers money and get that value add. So as you can see, a number of different sectors, a number of different segments and products leveraging IoT in the cloud to add value add to their product or differentiate in some way. Uh, one customer I want to focus specifically and really dive into kind of their use case, which is unique, is Module, which is down there in the left corner. So. The founders of this company actually come from insurance, which is something I really know nothing about except that I pay a lot of money for it. Uh, and they thought of a way that, you know, given their insurance background, understanding that it's really like it's risk based. So, how much risk can we reduce in, uh, you know, in terms of statistics and modeling on that data? So, they leveraged the cloud and IoT specifically to build out a platform for workers that can intake new data and insights from edge devices and leverage that to reduce risk for all the stakeholders involved. So essentially what they've built out is a smart belt, to put it simply, which retail workers, construction workers can wear. And it has a set of sensors in there that can detect different insights, send that up to the cloud to get processed, and ultimately provide insights to the employer or the employee on how they can further reduce risk and kind of model how that employee is acting. So they have different dashboards for the supervisors, the employees, and anyone that wants to consume it. So what sort of data they're sending up, and why is this important? The data they're sending up could be things like, you know, if they have a geofenced location that, that a construction worker is not supposed to enter because it's dangerous, they can, you know, send haptic feedback back to the belt using the cloud platform to notify the worker that, hey, this might be a dangerous area, we need, you need to exit. They're also measuring different um, set of insights from data like, like lumbar, so how many times the employee is kneeling down and, and twisting, things you're not supposed to do when lifting heavy loads, right? They're aggregating all this data into their platform, analyzing on the cloud, and providing it in a consumable way for the other stakeholders, like the insurance companies and the employers themselves. Ultimately, all reducing risk, right? So the value add there is they're reducing risk for all these stakeholders, leveraging the cloud, and what this does for the employees is it keeps them productive, it keeps them healthy. You're not going to get you get less back injuries. You get less injuries. Allows them to keep working. Um, I know sometimes if you get injuries, maybe you run out of workers' comp, and now you're losing hours, and it, it affects your life, right? They're doing this. It's lowering their insurance premiums as well, right? So 
Reducing risk means you don't have to pay as much money for the insurance, which is the whole point of insurance, and ultimately saving money for all stakeholders involved. So just to give you an example of the lumbar, what they've managed to do by collecting all this data from the smart belt is reduce the, uh, what's, what they're calling a lumbar score by 39%. And essentially what this means is they're reducing that risk for the end user, like the construction worker, the retail worker that has to do some manual labor by 39%, ultimately increasing their health, lowering their insurance premiums, et cetera. So how are they doing this with the cloud? I'm gonna do a very high level overview on kind of the different sections. So keep in mind there was three different things I mentioned in the beginning. There was the unlocking of the data, which is one part, analyzing the data, which is one of the most critical parts, and then figuring out how you can solve that business problem, which in this case is providing a way for the stakeholders to consume the data. So for this cloud architecture, the data ingestion from those smart belt devices occurs with, of course, AWS IoT Core, which is our ingestion platform for embedded devices, allowing devices to connect up to the cloud in a secure manner and send up its data and also receive data from the cloud. That data ingestion platform then can connect to the compute side, the analytics side, where Module has built out a, a set of proprietary algorithms that can you know, analyze that data set that they're setting up from these devices. They're using um, Kinesis services to stream this data to an EMR Spark cluster to run the anal analysis on this data. All that data crunching and analysis is then set to a database and durable storage so that it can be consumed by the stakeholders like the employee themselves, where they can view how many times that I you know, twist my back today, um, how many times am I kind of, you know, do I need to improve my lumbar score and whatnot. So that's sent to a S3 bucket where they can build out that website for their employees to consume. So the point here is that we have in, people that traditionally worked in insurance, were able to figure out a business problem ingest the data into a cloud platform and, and build a business out of it. And they're showing success on this with AWS um, using our cloud technologies and leveraging IoT. So the key takeaway here is that all the building blocks are in place for you guys to be able to do this yourselves. It's really just identifying the, those three different statements, right? Like how can you unlock the data from your devices if you have devices? What sort of reasoning are you doing on that, which is the key differentiator? And then what problems are you going to be solving with that? Which is really, you know, kind of this digital transformation that we're all here for, right? So that's all we have today. Again, uh, if you have any questions, we'd like to, you know, start a quorum here. And we'll be walking around at lunch. So what I love to hear from you guys is just, what are you guys doing today with cloud? How can we help you? Or just in general talking. So we'll be walking around and um, talking with you guys. So any general questions right now? I know it's lunch and it's important. Great, well thank you so much for having us and thanks Ash for inviting me up here. Thank you so much.